What's going on guys? I am standing in my landing where normally, actually back in the day, that's where my computer desk would have been. But we had a leak. The roof leaked. And here I'm gonna turn this way in case you can see it behind me. I noticed it up there and it resulted in me having to replace all this drywall. The windows are not helping the exposure on this camera, but uh, yeah. Taking a couple steps back on the house rentals, had to pull up a bunch of the floor and get this floor actually like lifted up so that I could have it dry out underneath. Had to replace that sheet of drywall, that sheet still gotta go up. And basically what's behind there, that's where the air stack goes up for like the main plumbing to let it breathe. And it leaked around the flashing up top and it all poured in. So we had to put a new flashing on the roof uh, around the pipe. It's good, now it doesn't leak. This all happened two weeks before my roof is getting done. Isn't that just lovely? And four days before we're going on this boat trip. All is not lost on the house though. We got, oh God, it's so hard to see because it's so bright. Maybe if I go lower. We got the new windows in. So they're shimmed and spray foamed in and there's a little bit of trim holding them from the outside. So both those big bay windows are in. I just got to uh, cut the cedar shake shims off and then I need to, oh, and then there's old windows that were actually tucked behind two pieces of plywood on both sides. That one has some broken windows. So I gotta take the trim off of those windows and we're actually gonna replace the glass because it looks better than the weird piece of plywood they had up front. But that's that all done. The walls framed up. So all that's left is to frame the front here, some insulation all the way around, um, and then vapor barrier. I gotta run my wires, all that fun stuff. Sick of living in Renos. There's the old glass that came out. It was just wedged between pieces of old rotted trim. So that was a lot of fun. I'll give you guys a view from the outside too. Actually, before I show you guys the front of the house, we've also been doing garden work while it's hot out. So started digging up all there, trying to get the garden. It's ridiculously loud out from the cars. Trying to get the garden cleaned up. Like that's all the junk we got out of the yard and all the debris and crap like that it's not a very big yard when we bought this place it had no grass it still doesn't like we just started digging out the garden um been concentrating on the inside next year a deck is going over this old cement foundation here and then uh, we're gonna till up a lot of this and put new grass seed down eventually get rid of my shed and all that so we can fit all this crap in a bigger shed and yeah fun it's never never ever ending all right, now I'll show you guys this outside window and then um, I got a really cool bolo, something I picked up. They're super, super rare toys, um, two different kinds. So they're kind of neat. They're from uh, the mid 80s and the early 70s. So I'll share those guys with you. And if you ever see them, definitely pick them up. Um, I'm set to make a couple hundred bucks off them, paid a dollar a piece. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll share some eBay sales with you. And then I got to go hit up a couple thrift stores, see what I can find. And I got a local Kijiji deal where I'm going to buy, um, I don't know, around like 45 different graphics cards. All pretty older ones. They go for anywhere from 10 to 60 bucks a piece. But that'll be pretty good. And I got to get rid of those old windows, that old TV, and all in behind that old TV is just donation crap. That's all got to go. So all that's got to go. All that's just mostly construction stuff and beer cans because when people help you, they drink your beer. But that's okay. I don't mind the free help if it costs me some beer. So I'm actually dubbing over this because it's way too loud outside with the cars, but here's the front of the house. It's got old cedar at the front. Don't mind that old AC. It does work. It just looks really shitty. Um, there's the new windows. Those ones were covered with plywood. I'm going to replace the glass. I got to repaint this front. The brick's not too bad. And then uh, in the next couple weeks, I'm getting all the windows and doors and everything capped because I don't know if you saw those top windows. They're not capped yet. These are the figures you want to be watching for. These are the mid 90 or mid 90s. These are the mid 80s uh, Matchbox Irwin Robotech figures. The only reason these grabbed my attention was mostly because of the box, just any kind of old toy complete in the box. I had no idea they were going to be worth what they were. One guy bought all three when I listed them and they sold in under 24 hours, which, you know, I maybe could have fetched more. There was a couple people with the box asking 300 bucks, but there was no sales as far as you could go back for that price. Uh, without the box, they were bringing anywhere from like 40 to 60 on some of them like on the next one I'll show you they're bringing 60 um, I took $10 less I believe it was on each one except for the one that sold for 110 I believe I took oh, respond to offer I believe I took uh, 90 on that so I was 
20 less on this one. He was a little bigger too. You could like put a figure in him and I think he was about 12 inches tall. But anyways, they were a dollar a piece and honestly, it's something I would have passed up had I not seen the box because they don't look, you know, that cool. I mean, this one stands out and believe it or not, this one was the cheapest one out of all of them and I took uh, 65 on this one. But again, I went to all the same buyer and I saved on shipping that way so I actually made a bit of money. But like I said, without the box, like if you take a look at some of these other ones, that doesn't look like anything special without the box i would totally pass that up i'm not going to anymore i'm going to keep my eyes peeled for these things but yeah if you see them matchbox Irwin, robotech uh, i think it was a tv show back in the 80s too definitely worth picking up definitely watching out for i don't know how often you'd find these though so i forgot my camera for the ride but uh another thing we just did today i went to pick up a whole bunch of graphics cards and they're on the box here and they all need to clean and a test but it's a hundred bucks that should get turned into about five six hundred dollars Here's all the cards I picked up. He had a lot more, but I only grabbed the ones that were going to sell for about 20 or more because anything under $10, I don't want to waste the time testing. Uh, the first ones are what you would call, um, not like a desktop graphics card, but a workstation graphics card. This one was a ATI Fire Pro 7700. Uh, I got four of these and I think you can, I'll try and make it focus here. It's terrible trying to get this camera to work. There it goes. But uh, yeah, V7700 Pros. These are for like AutoCAD, 3D rendering programs, things like that. These ones are a little dated, but I should get about 45 a piece. For All the other cards are just different variants of an X1650, I believe is what it was called. Yeah, X1650. They're just like an ATI 512 megabyte desktop card. A lot of them would have come standard into, you know, just basic PCs that you would buy, consumer PCs. But there's the four... Um, workstation cards and then i'll show you guys all these uh uh 1650s and they should uh the, the 1650s i should get about 21 to 25 dollars a piece plus shipping so it's not too bad and the nice thing about these i take one picture of like those atis you just saw the red ones and i put quantity four so it's not like i have to make you know these i think there's 20 of them these 20 listings but yeah these are basically just different variants and then there was this one a zeus card it's just a generic card i usually will use these in a build uh just for the convenience of having hdmi out so if someone wants to use it as a movie box or something like that i think it's like a 512 or something like that eah 5450 there you go and it's called a silent because there's no fan on the top for cooling that'll most likely go in a build these will be all these 1650 variants some of them are disgusting this one has odd mounting holes like it had some sort of shroud that went over top but the rest with that same cooler, like this one, don't have those holes. So I don't know if there's supposed to be a shroud over top or if it was just in a different PC. All of these are going to need cleaning up. I'll just dust them, brush them all off. I'll probably pull the heat sinks out and I'll, I'll put new thermal paste in them and I'll sell them as, um, not refurbished, but yeah, I guess kind of refurbished or, or cleaned up, restored. I don't know. Something like that will be put in the title. People like to know those new thermal paste and it's tested working. If you guys want to get into testing all these though, it's it's going to be a little bit of work. These variants are a little nicer too. They got the nice graphic on them and the, the blower style fan, which pushes heat out the back of the case or out the front of the case, however you want to mount them or however you want to call it, front of the graphics card, back of the PC case. I believe it was 20. I'll just keep stacking them here. But you can see there's the other variant. Just a, They'll all be roughly the same price. I'll probably sell the ones without the exhaust fans for a little cheaper just because they're more sought after when they, they have the exhaust ports on them for venting the air. It just works a little bit better. Even if I blew all these out for $20 a card at 20 cards, uh, what is that? That's two, 400 bucks I'd make off that. Uh, 300 because I, I did pay 100 for all these cards. So I paid up a little bit for them. But that's okay. I, I tested half of them when I was at the guy's place. And half of them booted up. They worked fine. I'm not going to sit there and test every one on them. He gave me a good enough price. But I will replace, like I said, the thermal paste. And I'll, I'll clean them up, get the dust off them. And I'll get them listed on eBay. I do like bulk quantity listings, though. Because he gets a lot of listings up with less work, right? And that's always a nice thing. So... That'll be fun to get listed. And then, yeah, hopefully they sell. They should only sit for... I can't see all of these cards lasting more than three months. Hopefully. I hope they all go in under three months. We'll see, though. Also, I think I'm going to do uh, some videos on how to sell computers and computer parts. And if you want to get into it. I was going to do one long video, but I kept trying to film it. It was just going to be like three hours. It would have been too much. So I'm going to do it in parts. I'll do like the basics and then what parts to look for, how to test them. And it'll get a little more advanced as it goes. So watch for those videos. I did start shooting the basics one, but it's it's a lot of information to cover. So I'm trying to give you the most important information without sort of wasting the most amount of time for videos. 
Um, but watch for that if you guys are interested in getting into computer parts. It's a fun thing to get into. A lot of profit, but a, a little more work and a little more risk. That's for sure. And a little more risk with returns, most definitely. I want to mention too, if you guys are going to get into doing electronics of any kind, buy these. These are warranty protection stickers. If you peel them off, it'll say void on the item. Each one has a unique barcode. So I'll stick them on somewhere on the card because I don't want someone to just replace the heat sink um, because then they could get away with giving you the heat sink with your serial code and a bad card back. So I'll stick it somewhere on the back or I'll wrap it around the front where it even gets on part of that um, plastic shroud on the top. But basically, I'll take a picture of that. It'll go in the listing. I record the serial number for each one going out, and I take a picture of the serial number when it goes out as well. And I just state the serial number has to be intact and untampered with to do returns. This actually has saved me a few times on so-called items not as described, and people return, uh, you know, DVD players that have been salvaged for parts or PCs that have been salvaged for parts, and they try and scam you. This has saved me a few times with eBay. It's quite the thing to have. If you guys were curious what that thing was I was setting the graphics cards on, it's actually a anti-static electronic work mat. I got it off Amazon. It was, uh, I think it was like $23, but it has little screw holders in it, like all down the side. It has these parts compartments. Uh, there's magnets in it, um, so it can hold things, but all the screw holes like there, they're all labeled 1, 2, 3, or A1, A2, A3, things like that. So you can really keep track of it when you're working on something. It's awesome i like having it i actually wish it was a little bigger because i can fit smaller atx motherboards but I, I can't fit like some of the full-size larger motherboards if it's a graphics card nice it's just handy to work on it doesn't bang around on the on the counter or a hard surface or anything like that so i like it as you can see like here i'll show you there's a motherboard on it there's a smaller motherboard so it fits a smaller motherboard all right anything past that it kind of gets a little big uh, you know, it's not bad. That actually came with my graphics cards, by the way. It's a second gen um, i series processor. I forget. It's a 1156, I think, is this socket. I don't actually remember. And it's got a i3 2400, I think. Anyways, he threw it in for 10 bucks. He doesn't know if it works or not, so I'll test it. If it does work, I'll get about 100 bucks, though. Well, I sold another big CRT monitor. This one is a 17-inch KDS, and KDS is Korea Data Systems. It's the big, old, heavy, thick one. This one does have a broken power button. It turns on, but the power button doesn't really work. It doesn't do what it's supposed to. And uh, it's not a big deal, though. I got $75 for it, plus $32 shipping, and it's going to New York. Also, I have over 100 VHS tapes. I'm going to have to package up after this monitor. Here's some of them boxed. This is a little more than half of them. I bet this box weighs 50 pounds plus. Uh, this was sold on Etsy. Oh, there you go. 46.2. My guess was off. Not too bad though. Under four pounds off. Thought it was going to be 50. But uh, yeah, this sold on Etsy for $60 plus uh, 55 for shipping. Sorry, I'm having a hard time remembering what it was. Should have wrote it down. But yeah, nice Etsy sale. These sat for about three months and they were free. So there's the two boxes of VHS tapes. That's uh, 112, I think, total VHS tapes. Uh, I shipped it through Freightcom. They used UPS, and it's going to run me a total of $48.90. So I thought I was actually going to lose money on shipping. I made a couple dollars. And if you guys haven't checked out Freightcom and you're from Canada, check them out because, like I said, that was under 50 bucks. And this is going from uh, near Toronto, Ontario, uh, to New Jersey. So pretty happy about that. I mean, they're free VHS tapes. I wouldn't sell them individually, but in a lot worked well. So while packing those VHS tapes up, I did have two more sales. Uh, these were just Amazon sales. First one is 007 for the PlayStation 2, Everything or Nothing. That was uh, $4.85 plus tax. And the next one was Battlestar Galactica. That one was uh, $9 plus shipping, and it's $3.49 for shipping. And shipping will cost me to ship these uh, I think it's like $2.22 for each one when they're in the padded envelope. And I have a quick trick if you guys are shipping DVDs and media, and I'll show you that. Also, if you're wondering why I sold such cheap games, because I get them in big lots. And Amazon, I don't... Oh, that one's loose. Amazon, I don't have to take any pictures or anything like that. I just scan the barcode, and I already have all my descriptions kind of pre-saved in Google Sheets, and I just copy-paste it over, so it's under 30 seconds of listing so i don't i don't mind but anyways i'll show you a trick with these because when shipping what will happen a lot they'll get tossed around and the disc will pop open like that and when it pops open 
and this gets shaken around. I don't want to do it because I don't want to scratch it. This just slides around inside here and it will destroy. Oh, that's not a great CD. That needs to clean. And it'll destroy the back of those discs. So I'll show you what I do. So this is all I do. I literally just take a little piece of square bubble wrap. I put it right here. When you close the case, you can't even hear the disc shaking around in there. It's nice and it's not going to fall out now. It won't get all scratched up. You don't... You could probably avoid it if there's no manual. The manual does help hold it down, but uh, I, I still do it just to be safe. You know, it saves a return. So, just a quick tip. Well, it's everything packed up. I just took my last little envelopes over to the post office. That was a good hundred plus dollar day in shipping. That's it for this uh, vlog video. And I would say, you know, don't be scared of the big things. Like I ship... It's a loud truck. Because, uh, you know, that monitor, the 100 plus VHS tapes, those were really big boxes. Uh, the VHS tapes totaled out to be like 70 pounds almost with the two boxes. Yeah, it takes a little more time. It's a pain in the ass to pack the stuff, but it's higher payouts, I find. I don't mind doing it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. See you all in the next video. Bye for now.